you're going to hear at the end of each of these stories, and so you're all invited to join in with the Yasser you betcha. Now, to do that, we're going to practice first. So on the count of three, everybody say Yasser you betcha at the same time. All right? So we got that on the count of three. One, two, three. Yasser you betcha. Oh, come on. A bunch of drunken Mormons can do it better than that. On the count of three. One, two, three. excited back in my own home in a disguise here, back before they built a new preserver longhouse. Used to be you'd walk in through the front door of your long hall, and you'd end up in the middle of an axe catching contest, whether you wanted to play or not. And everybody knows that, you know, Bjarke, he's the champion axe catcher whole village here, but a lot of people don't know why. You see, the Norseman being, but the Norseman is, Bjarke liked to go a lightning. The only problem was he wouldn't tell his wife, Hildy, where he was going and when he was coming back. So he'd walk in through the front door of his hall, Hildy, I'm home! There goes the <laughs> Now, you know Berserks aren't known for being all that smart. He was smart enough to know not to throw it back. He wasn't really worried about whether she could catch it or not. He just didn't want to give her any more ammo to throw it. <laughs> so anyway, like I said, you know, they built that new Berserker longhouse. And, you know, half the end, although he's not a Berserker, he ain't told that far off, neither. So he likes to go up there and party with them. And last time he'd been up there, he had such a good time that he forgot to put the bar back across the outside of the door to lock him in when he left. <laughs> he only got about halfway home when he passed out in the street. And that was when the berserks realized they weren't locked in. They got loose and they ran all over town. And they found him laying out there in the street and they rolled him over. Now you see, the thing was, though, that when half had fallen down, he had fell down on his face and he broke his nose. Blood spurted out all over his beard there. And when they said that, when they saw that, they figured he must be dead, so they had to give him a Viking funeral. <laughs> so they picked him up and carried him down to the fjord and stuck him on his boat, piled it up with wood and soaked it down with oil, put a dog down there by his feet, and then they ran into a problem. No matter how much they tried, they couldn't get none of the women in town to get on the boat and go up the ball out of it. <laughs> Something about being burned alive just didn't appeal to him. <laughs> So they put a sheep on there instead. <laughs> I guess they figured a girl's a girl. <laughs> now there were two problems with that. Yeah, only two problems with that. First of all, Sven pointed out to them that you know he wasn't no Norman, and so putting a sheep on there really wasn't appropriate. <laughs> and even if it had been appropriate, it wouldn't have done no good because it was a boy sheep and not a girl sheep. <laughs> So much fun, they really just didn't care. They went ahead and they put the sheep on the boat, they shoved it out into the fjord, and that was when Hagar realized he forgot to light it on fire. So he went back and got some torches, and they the ark and Bjorn all took turns throwing torches out there until they finally managed to land one on the boat and they caught fire. And right about then, the dog decided they didn't have enough. They didn't mind being on the boat, but nobody said nothing about no fire. <laughs> so we jumped over the boat and on the side there and swam back to shore. Now the sheep, on the other hand, didn't jump over the side, but it started by, and by, and by, and finally on that high, and woke up half dead. Now at first, he's trying to figure out how some silly sheep got out of his pen and got into his long haul. <laughs> then he smelled smoke. Then he figured, okay, well maybe I didn't make it all the day long, maybe I passed out down by the blacksmith shop, and that's not too far from the sheep's pen. And then he realized that it wasn't just smelling smoke, but his feet were getting awfully warm. <laughs> so he opened up his eyes and he saw that his feet weren't just getting warm, his feet were on fire! So he jumped up, started yelling, and screaming, and shouting, and stomping. The sheep decided it had enough and it jumped over the side. And that was when Half Dan, uh, Half -Dan realized that he wasn't in his long haul, he was on his boat, and his boat was on fire! So now he's yelling and screaming and shouting, splashing water over his side, trying to put it out. The Zerks are all laughing and shouting and pointing. Look, he's going to Valhalla! He's going to Valhalla! Where's the Valkyries? Where's the Valkyries? And that was when half Dan realized he wasn't going to be able to put out that fire, and he jumped over the side. And most everybody else decided to go back up into town, because nobody wanted to be there, but half Dan came up out of the box. <laughs> he did. He was cold, he was wet, and his hair and his beard were smoking. <laughs> they didn't have a whole lot of trouble getting the 
desserts back in the longhouse that night. <laughs> but I tell you what, the next time you want to go up there and party with the desserts, you better make sure when you leave, you put that bar back across the outside of the door. Yeah, sure, you finish. Oh, come on, I even give you a few. Let's try it again. One, two, three. <laughs>